In section 1.6, we'll be talking about paragraph proofs. And similarly to our two column proofs, we have components that we have to include in our paragraph proof. We still want to write down our givens, our proven conclusion statement, and draw the original diagram so that we can add tick marks along the way. In this paragraph proof, you want to have an introduction. In this introduction, you can include any given conditions or anything that you immediately draw from the given information. Second thing you want is the body of the paragraph. And in the body of the paragraph proof, you'll solve any equations and then also list any steps that lead to the conclusion. So in the body of the paragraph, you'll still be using your if-then statements like we discussed in section 1.4. Make sure that you are writing in complete sentences. Finally, you want to write some type of conclusion statement that summarizes the proof. And sometimes you can lead straight from the body into the conclusion and it ends really nicely together. Be aware that some can be proven false. So if you run across a proof that can be proved false, you can do this through either the use of a counterexample, or you'll see some proofs that are just generally false. And when you come across ones like these, I think it'll be pretty straightforward for you to recognize. We'll do some examples together in a little while during the second video. Let's take a look at our first example. For this first example, we're given that the measure of angle V is equal to 119 and 2 thirds degrees, while the measure of angle S is 119 degrees and 40 minutes. And we want to conclude in the end that angle V is congruent to angle S. So we want to say that those two angles are congruent. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, it's very obvious here. But don't forget, in a proof, we want to make sure that we include all of the steps, even if it seems unnecessary or obvious to you. So let's go ahead and start off our paragraph proof by saying our given information. So we're given that the measure of angle V is 119 and 2 thirds degrees, and the measure of angle S is 119 degrees and 40 minutes. Let's use our knowledge from before that we discussed about degrees to minutes, minutes to degrees, and we know that there are going to be 60 minutes in each degree. So we want to go ahead and write that down. Remember, you want someone who doesn't know anything about geometry to be able to read this proof and understand. So you have to explain there are 60 minutes in a degree. So that means if we want to take our two-thirds of a degree from angle V and multiply it by 60, we are left with 40 minutes as a result. So therefore, we can say that the measure of angle V is 119 degrees and 40 minutes. Therefore, since we were given that the measure of angle S is 119 degrees and 40 minutes, we can say that angle V is congruent to angle S because if two angles let's think about how we want to word this. So we know that the measure of angle S is 119 degrees and 40 minutes. And the measure of angle V, we said, is 119 degrees and 40 minutes. So we should say, if two angles have the same measure, since we mentioned the specific measurements of those angles, we can say that if two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. So we use that if-then statement to conclude our paragraph proof, and it flows really nicely into that conclusion. Let's go ahead and take a look at example two. For example two, the only thing we're given are the diagrams shown. So we have the diagrams to the right to work with. And in the end, we want to prove that the measure of angle FEH, okay, FEH is congruent to the measure of angle JKM. So we want to show that the measure of angle FEH is 135 degrees, just like angle JKM. So it is given the diagram is shown. We do want to include that given information in the opening part of our paragraph proof. Also, we want to mention that the measure of angle JKM is 135 degrees. That's important as well. Now let's look a look at what we're given. Since we're given the diagram as shown, we should be thinking about straight angles because that's one of the few things that we can assume from a diagram. So we want to mention that since straight angles can be assumed, the one straight angle that we have in our diagram 
is angle DEH. So we can say, since trid angles can be assumed from a diagram, angle DEH is a straight angle. Since we have that x and 3x there, it looks like we'll be doing a part plus part equals whole equation. So in order to do so, we have to be working with some measurements. So we want to say that that straight angle must measure 180 degrees, but we want to use an if-then statement to say that. So we want to write, thus, if angle um, DH is a straight angle, then it has a measure of 180 degrees. So we can mention there that DEH measures 180 degrees because if an angle is a straight angle, then it has a measure of 180 degrees. I know that may seem obvious, but once again, we're writing down everything. We want to explain everything that we're doing. So from here, we can set up an equation and solve. So looking at the, the diagram, the one to the left, we can say that angle DEF plus angle FEH must equal angle DEH, that straight angle. Those two angles together add up to the straight angle. And angle DEF is represented by X in the diagram, while angle FEH is represented by 3X. So we can say that X plus 3X must equal 180. So 4X must equal 180, and X must equal 45. Now, since we know that x is 45, we can substitute that in for the x's above in the first diagram. And specifically, we want to prove that angle FEH is congruent to angle JKM. So let's go ahead and substitute that 45 in for the x, which represents angle FEH. So FEH is represented by 3x, but now we know that x is 45. So we can say 3 times 45 is 135. Therefore, we know that the measure of angle FEH is also 135 degrees. So we can say that angle FEH is congruent to angle JKM since, because if two angles have the same measure, since we mentioned in the proof that each angle has a measure of 135 degrees, then they are congruent.